Hello everyone, Code Queen Ayeli. Have you missed me? I've missed you too. I hope that you're ready for this video because I'm going to show you how to create your own custom login for Wix. Before I get started, I want to remind you to visit my website. Go to totallycodable.com where you will find many, many resources. It has all of the links to our Wix code community, uh, to the tutorials, to my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook page. Make sure you join, make sure you follow, because we're always posting announcements, the latest features, the latest who did what and where. <laughs> and if you ever get stuck with a Wix code project or a Wix code question, remember that there are experts available that you can hire. I'm also available. Just click on the Hire Code Queen button and you can contact me directly. You can also find designers and you'll have the direct link to the support center, which is actually where we're going to do our tutorial today. So if you hit that button and click visit support, you're going to land on support.totallycodable.com. This knowledge base is infused with Wix code snippets, article tutorials, and troubleshooting tips of all kinds. These articles and these codes are made by me. They're made by the community. Uh, one of our top featured coders this month is Salman. He's from our Totally Codable Facebook group, so make sure that you say hi and tell him that you heard his name in one of my videos. You will see some of his articles on here too. Click on the search bar so we can find the article that we're going to be working with today. So type in the word login. You'll see that it does an auto smart search and it auto suggests all the possible articles that you might be interested in. We only want one today. So click on the one that says custom login sign on screen. Do you remember what the Wix login looks like? That native white giant screen? Let me show it to you. Here it is. That's all it is. The big white screen. <laughs> right now, whenever you want a member to log into your website, they not only log into the page that they're on, but they're logging into your entire website. They have one screen to do it in, which is Wix. It's going to look the same. It's one window, but there's no way to customize it at the moment. You can, however, change this. You can create a new design, add a little bit of code, activate it, and voila, you have your own custom screen. Let me show you what that looks like. This is one of my websites, totallyshoppable.com. Mm, related? I don't know. <laughs> if you click on the button that's in the corner that says register slash account, you'll see that a custom login screen pops up on the side. It has a place for your email and your password and the enter button. It also has a button that says register here and forgot password so that if I accidentally forgot my password, I can reset it here. Unfortunately, there's only one way to reset the password and that's using the native Wix screen. So this will still come up the same, but at least you get everything else that's nice and customized, right? Let's go back to the article. From here, if you scroll down, it's gonna give you some tips of what you need to know, what to do before we begin. Most of you already know to turn on the developer tools. You do that here. Go to code, turn on tools. Then you start adding your elements to the light box. You click on the side panel, go to user input, and drag and drop some text elements. You only need two for the sign on, email and password. Now we configure and customize the elements. Click on an element and select the settings. Make sure that the password is set to password type and it is also set to required. Then for the email, make sure you click on the setting icon one more time, set the type to email and then required. It's always good to add a little bit of design for the error setting. So click on that little paintbrush, select the dropdown, find the word error, and start designing what that error will look like. After you're done with that, we start configuring the properties panel of each element. You turn on the properties panel on the same menu bar that you turned on 
the developer tools, or just right click the element and select view properties. That'll bring up this little panel. From here, click on the ID section and change the ID. Why do we want to change the ID? Because it'll be easier for us to identify in the code. So the first one, in my example, I put it as email. So make sure you do this for all the elements. Here's one example of what it would look like for the email. You do the same thing for password, and I recommend you do the same thing for the button. The button. <laughs> so you add a button because we need to submit the information. You can label it whatever you want. For my example, I labeled it enter. So once they click on the enter button, they enter the website. Notice how underneath the login button, there is uh, a text that looks like it's scratched out. Uh, well, all these little diagonal lines, it just means that this element is collapsed. So I added a regular text. I set it to collapse on load within the properties panel. See this hidden on load and collapsed on load. I selected this one for my text element because I'm going to use that later as an error message. Now underneath that, I added another button, a regular button. Notice that I did not link it to anything, but I did change the name to forgot password. This one will be triggered via the code. So that way, as soon as a person clicks it, it'll prompt the forgot password window. And when I said via the code, I mean everything will be through the code. I will not activate the on click event in the properties panel. So don't do it. <laughs> now that you've added everything, you're ready to copy and paste the code to your page. So go ahead and highlight all of this. Don't do that. <laughs> highlight all of this and paste it onto your page. Let's go to the editor to show you what that looks like. I'm going to find my light box. On the bottom, I'm going to click maximize and I'll paste my code here. And now you're ready to start editing your code to match your IDs and whatever else you change the name of. Understanding the code and modifying it is very, very important. We're basically using the onReady function so that when the page is ready and when somebody clicks on the forgot password button, I want it to prompt the forgot password window. And that's all that giant piece of code says. That's it. Then on the bottom, for the login button, you do activate the on click event. And once you do, it'll perform this down here. We're going to grab the email and password. So we created a variable, let email and let password. And then we're going to get what those values are. And notice on line 23, it says Wix users login email comma password. Well, these are the same variables that we listed up here. So if you change those variables, make sure that you match them on line 23 as well. Then on line 26, I'm going to go ahead and redirect the person to a specific page after they have successfully logged in. So it's important to change this URL ending if you want to do the same thing. So instead of slash account slash my dash account, you enter your URL. Maybe you just want to send them to the home page. Or if you don't want to do that at all, delete the whole line and add your new code. On line 30 is where you'll see the error message. I labeled mine error message and I told it to expand. So that's why it says error message dot expand. Because at the beginning, I told that same text element to be collapsed on load. Now you're not done. After you modify your code, we go to the last step, which is activating your login window. To do this, you go to the side menu, find the pages where it says member pages, and then look for member signup settings. Click on that. In tiny little blue letters, you're going to see edit custom signup. Once you click on that, it'll open up two things. One, Enable custom signup should be on. And then you're going to select the light box that you want to connect it to. Notice that only light boxes are allowed to be connected to the login window. 
so you cannot create your login on a page. It has to be a light box. From the drop down, select the correct light box and click done. After you click done, make sure to click save so that way it saves your new sign up settings. Once you're done saving, don't forget to save and publish your site to make it live. And that's it. You're done. That was super easy, right? Once you master the login code and you want to tackle the registration, then go ahead and look for that article down here in the related content section at the bottom of the page. If you still need help, then I have a list of recommended expert coders. Click on that button to view the code experts on totallycodable.com. I'm there too. You can contact me if you need to, but there are some amazing expert coders that are available. All you have to do is find one, click on their name, read their information, and give them an email. Not give them a call. <laughs> well, that's it for today. If you have any questions, make sure to join the Totally Codable Facebook group to post your questions and have the community help you. There's over 1,300 members, so I'm pretty sure your chances are good to find your answer. I'll see you soon. Bye.